in a shop environment, it is a universally accepted truth that a horizontal surface will soon be covered. Hey everybody, Adam Savage here in my cave, and I am currently in what I consider the, the hardware store part of my cave. This is, uh, this here is all the bits and bobs that I need to rely upon to make things. Attachment methods, springs, corks, uh, toggle switches, flathead Phillips screwdrivers, costume jewelry, RC servos, bearings, handles, corners. These are Sortimo racks. Back in like, something like 2007 or eight, my then cameraman, Tim Aylwood, said to me, mate, he's Australian, mate, I found these sorting cabinets from Germany that I think you might like. And I bought some, I bought some more, I bought some even more. I was making television money and I invested. I now have 55 Sortimo racks filled with um, an incredibly diverse, a uh, range of materials, a panoply, one of my favorite words, a panoply, P-A-N-O-P-L-Y, a panoply of choices for hardware. Let's begin this video by saying I have a problem to solve, and my problem to solve is how to get stuff out of the Sortimo racks. That doesn't sound like it's a big problem. I've got them here and I can pull them out when I want to. I can pull them out when I want to and open them up and have some stuff, have access to the stuff inside. That seems pretty straightforward, but you notice what I'm doing, I'm holding it. And then I've gotta go find a horizontal surface for it. Yeah. And then I gotta open it and find out what's inside. Maybe you see where I'm going here. Um, and then I noticed early on that the Sortimos had this accommodation in them that looked like it was meant for some kind of racking. In the Sortimo racks, they just sit on little skids that ride on the feet, but there's this, this thing here that looks like it's meant to receive a drawer slide. So, reader, I took a couple of 16 inch drawer slides, which is, in my estimation, the ideal length for a Sortimo rack. They are not 16 inches deep, but when you pull them all the way out on a drawer slide, you do want to be able to open the lid so you can see it. So 16 inches is the right length. <clears throat> so I attached to this drawer slide uh, a piece of acrylic here and a piece of acrylic here to hopefully grab those parts of the Sortimo. And this was an idea for making my Sortimo racks accessible in situ. And I'm obsessed with this idea uh, because I love the idea of being able to go over here and pull one of these out and just open it, get what I need and slot it back in. It's hard to overestimate how important that would be here because every time I pull one of these, these things out and I have to find a horizontal surface, I'll be honest with you, I have at times done things like balanced one on R2-D2's head. As it currently stands, it is packed. Every single one of these things is completely packed with stuff and I have more stuff. So one that's gonna happen in this video, which will take place over several days, even a couple of weeks, um, is I am adding extra space. 65 Sortimo racks is what I'm creating the space for. 65 in total. Oh, it's so awesome. Um, and the Jet Propulsion Labs, when they make something and include space for stuff that it does not yet hold, when you, when, you, when you build, I did this for my hammers. I made a rack for my hammers, but I included space for hammers I did not yet own, and Tom Sachs told me that at JPL they call that baby fat. I just love that term. I love institutional terms like that. Baby fat. You'll grow out of it, but it's here for now. So I need 10 racks worth of baby fat for this system. But if this doesn't work, then where are we at? I have here... <laughs> I have here like a king's ransom in drawer slides. This is, I have, yeah, I have enough for 65 shelves. Um, so where are we at? Where we're at is that I have bought drawer slides for 65 Sortimos and I think I have my solution and it's this. Uh, 
that's all right. Um, this is a bit of O three O, about three quarters of a millimeter. Uh, this is thirty thousandths thick, sixty sixty one aluminum. And what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to cut it in its corners, and I am going to bend it into a shelf that holds this. And then I'm going to put punches in the side that match the hole pattern on the drawer slides so that I can rivet the shelf that I bend into, you see where I'm going with this? You see where I'm going? Okay, good. I'm so sure this is gonna work that I have 65 of these coming uh, in a couple of days from uh, a metal supplier here in San Francisco. Um, so what is it? It is incumbent on me today. I have, I'm slowly putting, the, this is a big infrastructure project. There are lots of repeated steps. I have 65 drawers. I am going to, uh, I'm going to, uh, it's gonna be great. 65 drawers and five stacks of 13. That means the highest drawer will actually be slightly less high than this one here. Yeah, so I'll be able to look inside the top drawer Top drawer, the top drawer, and get what I need. There's my plywood. Um, our local lumber yard is having a sale on this birch face ply. The interior is a horror show. Oh God, look at this. I'm sure there's like clothing and animal parts in there or something. Who knows? Um, the interior is. Don't ever put wood like that into your laser cutter. When plywood has voids in it, those voids create pockets where hot gas can build up and set your laser cutter on fire. So I've got the plywood, I've got the drawer slides, the aluminum is on order. What I'd like to do today is figure out precisely, I wanna make this shelf. I, bought, I have two pieces of aluminum to, uh, to work with here at the cave, so I'm gonna make my corner cuts and I'm gonna hit this on the metal brake, make a shelf out of it, and figure out my whole drilling pattern. So I'm going to basically use these two shelves to work out the production pipeline of making 65 shelves out of this stuff in something like a timely manner. Again, 65 of these, if you have an operation that is two minutes per, that's over two hours of work. Two minutes per. So yeah, there is a particular attention required when you are working on multiples. This is something really key for uh, new makers. When you are working on multiples of things, you can get into the weeds in some spectacular ways if you are not paying attention. Specifically because of how quickly new tasks add up in terms of time. Um, I've been there, been there so many times, just giving you that warning. So I'm trying to run some of this um, uh, 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 tomfoolery off at the pass. Um, we are going to, up till now, all my measurements have been theoretical based on the critical measurements of these things on paper. Now it's the business end. Now it's incumbent on me to mark this out so that it fits the sort of bend it into a shelf that gives me enough room that it's easy. Yeah, I wanna create a shelf where this guy, this guy slots in. First of all, you wanna be able to plop it in. So it can't be super critical to the edges. I need like quarter inch of play space on either side. Second of all, I don't wanna be able to put it too far back. So we need a back lip that is um, a little taller. I think I've allocated about an inch, inch and a half for that. And then I want a front lip so when I pull on it, it can come out. But that front lip down here only needs to be maybe half an inch tall at the most. Uh, that's what we're going to favor first. And in order to do those, you know, bend up here and bend back here and here, I need to cut into these corners. So we're gonna lay this out figure out how big the shelf is, bend the shelf. Once we have two bent shelves, then I'm going to assemble uh, some pieces of three-quarter ply in the orientation that they are, and I'm going to actually see how they work and make sure they work so that when the aluminum arrives, we are off to the races. That's the plan. Mm.
I have my aluminum sheet marked up here. These are going to be the two. Oh, sorry, these are going to be the two holes that the uh, that the side of my shelf hangs off of. Uh, but first, I need to cut in the corners here in all four corners, and then I'm bending all these up. So I'm going to bring out my metal brake, which hasn't been here for a while. Boy. I've got my shelf markings marked out and I've got these four corners I've got to remove, but I'm not gonna remove all four corners. These two corners are the back and they will actually come in and get a, um, they will actually connect to the sides. That's gonna be a thing. Um, but I do need to cut these and I want a little bit of a, yeah, okay. So I've got a little bit of cutting to do on the bandsaw. And then when I do those cuts, I'll come back and talk to you about them. I have punched the four holes where the rivets will attach to the shelves. There they are, I'm using a, a hole punch. If this all works the way I want it to, then what I'm gonna do is make a jig for my hole punch, make a jig for this so that each of these bends can be made at once. I'll have a stack of 60 of these and I'll be workshopping through an assembly line like process. Right now, I wanna do the backs first. Metal brake is one of my all time favorite sheet metal tools. This one is, uh, this one is just about 18 inches. Is that what it is? Actually, let's double check that. Yeah, uh, two, two feet, it's a two footer. Finding them this small is non-trivial. Whenever I do, I actually try and buy them because they really are hen's teeth. Uh, so I'm gonna come up to my line and I'm gonna clamp it, there we go. Now it's clamped, all right? And so I bend it, and bending it is bringing it like this. Now, I'm gonna bend these sides. Here's what's gonna happen. I'm gonna bend these sides up, but I'm going to not bend that part because I want to bend that Uh, ah, okay, hold on. So now I'm gonna use a hand metal break and I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna go, yeah, about there. And I'm gonna bend this in. Yep, that's great. Do the same thing with this one. Now I want to bend these up to that. Oh, actually, nope, I tell a lie. First, I'm going to bend this front lip, whoop, like that. Bending up. Nice and up and down. I can fix that. Actually, I'm going to fix that now. So, um, there's one, there's two, I'm going to remove them. This is the front, yep, okay, so. All right, this is how it goes. One goes like this. Oh, wow. Oh, okay, that does fit. All right. There is one.
All right. What I've done here. So, a cut like this is easy to make on the bandsaw. However, it's usually only easy to make from one side and then you have to make other cuts from the other side. So this is a marking template that allows me to choose if I'm doing the rear of the thing, that's the rear, that's the corner, I make that mark and I cut there, ba, ba, ba. but I can also make that mark on the other side and I can do the same thing here. So all of my markings will be bilaterally symmetrical because I have a two-sided template. And then for the front piece here, where I'm cutting uh, this relief, there we go. So there, now you can see. So now I do front and outside edge, and then I have whoop, that business going on, which is great. Okay, so, um, so yeah, I do front, outside edge, and then on this one, front, outside edge and I make this mark yep like that on the corner so let's um, on the bandsaw I can make that cut and that cut on this side ay, ay, ay. but wait a second actually All right, I'm kind of going. We're sort of making this work. Let's see if I can get this going. Okay, I'm gonna do this. So that is a drawer. Let's measure it. 18 and a quarter, 18 and a quarter. All right, so now we can bend the front up. Ooh, right, I gotta add. Lord, I gotta figure out the protocol for this. Because I think this one can go. So let's just see here, I put this here. And this comes in. going to uh yeah um i'm gonna build a quick little mock-up here of some three-quarter inch ply uprights so that i can test out this drawer and see how it feels as it works since i want to do a two drawer test i'm trying to i'm going to try and bend this back into something that is useful to me
Oh, right. Moment of truth, lads. Moment of truth. Here's how we're going to do this. We're going to... Are we? It's going to work like this. It might. Yes, it did it well. Good. All right. So we're going to clamp this to the table like this. Same thing over here. We're simulating a workbench environment. All right, this, let me bring it down to my level. This is the uh, second one. So we're going to, we're going to feed these in. progress has been made. I find, I have found in the past drawers, drawer slides to be touchy. Like, obviously, these are linear rails and they need to be well aligned with each other and square and parallel and correctly perpendicular. Um, what I have come to understand is that uh, the drawer system is more flexible than I gave it credit for. And that flexibility is built in right here. Um, these tabs here allow, uh, allow this thing to be micro adjusted out from the wall at a very fine level of attenuation. Um, I had a, so anyway, yeah, here we go. This is the concept. There is a sort of mode drawer, and there is another one. Uh, it's almost tipping over my whole work table. But, uh, oh, right. This is, without a doubt, the heaviest of all my boxes. It's full of bearings and shoulder bolts. Oh, wait a minute. Shoulder bolts. Anyway, um, I was thinking about where these could sort. And then the other thing about this is you can pull this out and take it away, and you can put this back in. There we go. Plus, you can, if you want to, just load this right in there and sock it away if you feel like it, or you can pull it out and load it in there. These are supposedly 150 pound drawer slides and they are both working in the soft close. And this is the, one of these is that Caddy Wampus drawer slide, but I believe the system is built to be adjustable, and I appreciate that about them. Um, that is what the final drawers are going to look like, much more than that. Uh, and I think I have my protocol. So, I think we're ready. I think I've written order of operations uh, where I need them. 65, 65 drawers now. I'm gonna make 70 all told so that I have extras, maybe 68, who knows. But you know, I'm gonna go overboard a little bit. And the, this drawer set can actually live somewhere. Maybe it's at home. Um, This whole malarkey, 20 and three quarters. Yeah. And see, that floats a little bit, and that floats a little bit, and I think that's fine. One other thing. Look at all those drawer slides down there. The uh, long one in brown paper, those are 24 inch slides for the flat file I'm going to build Ooh, later, this, later this year. Later this year, maybe in a few weeks, who knows? <laughs> I have just made this beautiful set of 
drawer slide platforms that allow me uh, a much greater level of utility for my Sortimo sorting wax. This will improve the hardware store that this room is by a factor of two, frankly. So I'll be able to walk up to one, pull it out, open it up, grab the thing I need, pop it back, and put it back in, and I don't ever have had to find a piece of horizontal surface to put that thing on. No, I'll put that back before I forget. There you go. And all the way back. Now, I need to make 65 of these, 65 drawer slide sets. This is two, um, so 63 more. But again, these are just the test ones. This, so today was only a test day uh, for just finding out how all this stuff worked together. I've got a whole bunch of pieces of aluminum coming on Monday, and when it comes, I wanna be able, so today was setting up all the systems for punching correctly, for cutting, for uh, for bending, for attaching, and for final assembly. Uh, and in order to achieve that, there was a large complement of tools. One of the things about having a shop is that you are often astounded by how many tools you pull out to do what seems like a simple thing. To begin, uh, this little thwacker hammer, I found this on eBay years ago, I love this thing. It's plastic, but it doesn't shatter and it's got a, a good little amount of weight behind it. It's one of my regular go-to thwackers. And I was using it to actually adjust, uh, to loosen a screw that attached this and give it a little bit of adjustment left or right. Um, I also got a, a Pika pen for marking, uh, for pattern marking, a uh, pencil for um, drawing. Those are going to be part of almost every build that I pull out. Cordless drill with an eighth inch drill bit. This was for uh, punching, making holes for the rivets in the sides of these if I needed it. Uh, also, they were for drilling out the rivets. Eighth inch drill bit goes back into the drill bit drawer. From the other room, because not everything I used came out here. Uh, air stapler with the long staples in it, because that's how I assembled that box. There's one, two, three, four on each corner. Um, and then I pulled out the other tape measure. I often end up pulling out all the tape measures at the end of a gig, at the end of a build. Um, and while we're putting drills back, also, I pulled out one of my little drivers just to give me some sensitivity for the uh, reaching where I wanted to for attaching the drawer slides. I broke out a couple of C-clamps thinking that might help me clamp this down, but they were uh, the table had a different structure than I realized. Um, plus, I have these... Um, I have these handheld metal brakes. They're literally for bending sheet metal. Uh, I had to modify this side to be able to do these little tabby tabs on the side here at the back. Um, uh, yeah, putting those away. Uh, for taking apart my metal brake, I used uh, metric Bontuis key handles. Um, and also I'm going to, I also used uh, one of the other things, a Imperial Bondus T handle. I'll put those all back. Drywall screws box for obvious reasons. Second hole punch. This is my Ingersoll Rand hole punch. It's set up right now with an eighth inch punch. Uh, I'm using that in conjunction with a bench punch to punch the uh, rivet holes to hold the drawer slides up. Um, this one I bought years ago on eBay. It came literally from the shop that maintained a Univac computer. This came, come, came with an Ingersoll Rand label on the toolbox. Um, I just use it for making holes. Uh, and there's a box of rivet hardware around here somewhere, and here's a rivet gun that'll go in there when I locate it. Oh, uh, I broke out a flathead screwdriver specifically for getting in there and opening that up and giving myself a little more space. Out of my sheet metal screw box, I'm using these guys to attach my drawer slides because I have a wide head, which actually gives me a lot of... Uh, uh, 
pressure against the side of the drawer slide uh, and they bite into the wood and they're not longer than three quarters of an inch. They don't stick out of the sides. Yeah. No. Um, I'm going to put those back along with two quarter 20 half inch cap head screws. I had thought that those might be useful for me for holding down the template I attached to my metal brake. Here are some of my notes about the breakdown here. I'm going to hold on to those. Uh, when I was adding a template to my metal brake, I needed to tap some holes from high up and I didn't have a clear path. So that's why I utilized this extremely long quarter 20 tap with the tap wrench here. Um, I started with a different tap wrench, but get yourself some long tap wrenches. Yeah. Did I cover the see-through ruler? The one I like because it's got rubber on the bottom and it's got a metal edge so you can cut against it. Yeah, I use that a lot. Oh, one of the things that this ruler is particularly excellent at is using the grid to line stuff up and make sure that you are parallel. This grid that's inherent in there, if you can see it, that grid is a, a spectacular tool for alignment. A tool for alignment I have been using since the mid 80s when I first got one of these rulers. Can't twist, my favorite little clamps, was bought by a bigger company, I think, and they sent me some of their bigger hardware. So whereas I like to use, this is gonna make you crack up. I love these, these are can't twist. They, they are clamps, they clamp really hard, they're amazing. Here's a nice big one, yeah. Um, so I got a few of these that the company sent me and I was also trying to use these to hold down, but again, the structure on the underside of the table wasn't as robust as I wanted it to be, so they went by the wayside. One of the things I made today was a corner cutting template that works the same from both sides so that I could mark all four corners of each piece of my aluminum so that everything would align with itself and in order to do this, I made a slice up the middle on the table saw here. And to do that, I used this rabbit cutting jig uh, that slots into my table saw. I bought this on Craigslist a few years ago. I use it about every two years, but every time I do, I'm so glad I'm not hand feeding a piece of wood through like that, because that's some scary stuff. All right, put this back where it belongs. Calipers, I use these to do some alignment. This is a file I use to clean up the T-slot on my metal break, and these two little bar clamps, which are, by the way, fabulous, fabulous little clamps. Um, these two bar clamps were also a method of potentially holding onto this, and it didn't be, it didn't be necessary. I recently built a shelf uh, to house all of my oils in the shop because I was tired of them living in multiple locations. Um, and I discovered that I have all sorts of different kinds of tap uh, tap cutting fluid for cutting threads. So I broke out some of the tap magic and I tried that. I also today used um, one of my favorite tools, which is my little uh, my little pocket square. Um, this is a phenomenal little tool, specifically because you can set a depth here and then work right up to it. I really dig it. This is in the regular, uh, what do you call it? Uh, rotation on my first order retrievability card. One of my all-time favorite tools in the world, in the world, is a portable bandsaw. This one is the large mouth one made by DeWalt. Milwaukee also makes one. I'm sure there are a bunch of others, but this one is mine. Uh, this also is always out at the ready in a central location because I use it constantly. I thought I was going to cut a copper bar, but instead I made a template stop out of wood instead of copper. Because why use copper? It's expensive and heavy. Wood did just fine. Oh, also I broke out a different thwacker. I wanted a little more weight behind it for adjusting one of the aluminum shelves. I love nothing more than marking up templates. I love templates. I keep all templates. I love them. They make me so happy. See, I keep pulling the Pika pens out and they keep multiplying. I used a little WD-40 to clean up my metal brake before I started working on it. Sometimes I am not a smart man. For instance, I knew that I had used rivets to make this with, and I had here, 
a rivet gun and rivets. And I was like thinking I was going just a little bit crazy because I was like looking everywhere and they were right here and I couldn't find them. And I looked over there and I looked back over here and I wandered back and forth. You watched me do it a couple of times. Oh, there they are. I use the bearing drawer simply because it's the heaviest sort of a rack I have. And uh, I wanted this to see how this really, how this really behaved. And Seems kind of great. Rags, I use both of these for obvious reasons. Many sizes of bar clamps. Many sizes of bar clamps is never a bad thing to have in the shop. Um, I only have a couple sizes. I have those shorties I showed you and these longies. I should get some more. This is another one of my handheld metal brakes, and this one is made by Wiss, W-I-S-S. -S. Um, there they are, Wiss, Wiss. Yeah, there may be some double ups here between some stuff I've done show and tells on before, but um, all of that, all of those things were necessary were necessary, as they say on the ground. Is it necessary? Um, Philip. I noticed that Philip has three syllables on the crown. Philip. 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 Oh, right. I have one more thing. Yes. The other thing that I utilized a lot in this build was my metal brake. Um, a very, very, very spectacular and useful tool. And yeah, that's a nice compendium of everything it took to build that drawer template project today. Thank you guys for joining me for this one day build. I remain Adam Savage. This is my cave, and I will see you guys next time. Cheers.